There's no space that his love can't reach. There's no place that we can't find peace. There's no end to amazing grace. Take me with your arms spread wide. Take me like an orphan child. Never let go, never leave my side. Cause I am holding on to you. I am holding on to you. Cause in the middle of a storm, I am holding on. I am. Love so oh my God to find I am overwhelmed What a joy divine Love like this It's our hearts on fire Cause I am Holding on to you I am Holding on to you Cause in the middle of a storm This is my resurrection song. This is my hallelujah God. This is why I see you are There's no space that his love can't reach. There's no place where we can't find peace. There's no end to amazing Surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child. You have chosen me. Love has called my name. I've been born again into your family. Blood flows through my veins. Oh, I'm no longer a slave.
child of God. Now I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. On my knees, I, before the great multitude of heavenly witnesses, offer myself, soul and body, to you, eternal Spirit of God. I adore the brightness of your purity, the unerring keenness of your justice, and the might of your love. You are the strength and light of my soul, in you I live and move and am. I desire never to grieve you by unfaithfulness to grace, and I pray with all my heart to be kept from the smallest sin against you. Mercifully guard my every thought, and grant that I may always watch for your light and listen to your voice and follow your gracious inspirations. I cling to you and give myself to you and ask you by your compassion to watch over me in my weakness, holding the pierced feet of Jesus and looking at his five wounds and trusting in his precious blood and adoring his open side and stricken heart. I implore you, adorable spirit, helper of my infirmity, to keep me in your grace that I may never sin against you. Give me grace, O Holy Spirit, spirit of the Father and the Son, to say to you always and everywhere, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, and enkindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit, and they shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. Pope Francis shares on this fruit of peace. When the Holy Spirit comes to dwell in our hearts, he infuses us with consolation and peace. And he leads us to the awareness of how small we are. With that attitude, strongly recommended by Jesus in the Gospel, of one who places his every care and expectation in God, and feels enfolded and sustained by his warmth and protection, just as a child with his father. This is what the Holy Spirit does in our hearts. He makes us feel like children in the arms of the Father. In this sense, then, we correctly comprehend how fear of the Lord in us takes on the form of docility, gratitude, and praise. By filling our hearts with hope. Indeed, we frequently fail to grasp the plan of God, and we realize that we are not capable of assuring ourselves happiness and eternal life. It is precisely in experiencing our own limitations and our poverty, however, that the Holy Spirit comforts us and lets us perceive that the only important thing is to allow ourselves to be led by Jesus into the arms of the Father. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. I have told you this while I am with you, the Advocate, the Holy Spirit that the Father will send in my name. He will teach you everything and remind you of all that I told you. Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid. You heard me tell you I am going away and I will come back to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice that I have told you this before it happens so that when it happens, you may believe. I will no longer speak much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming. 
He has no power over me, but the world must know that I love the Father and that I do just as the Father has commanded me. Get up, let us go. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Jesus Christ. Christ. speaks of peace to his people. The Lord speaks of peace to his people. I will hear what God proclaims, for he proclaims peace. Justice and peace shall kiss. Truth shall spring out of the earth. And justice shall look down from heaven. The Lord speaks of peace to his people. The Lord speaks of peace to his people. benefits our land shall yield its increase just shall walk before him and salvation along the way of his steps the Lord speaks of peace to his people the Lord speaks of peace to his people. God bless you, and I hope that your uh, time of preparation for the gifts of the Holy Spirit has been going well. Uh, my name is Father Kevin Schrader. I am a priest of St. Louis a pastor of Incarnate Word Parish in Chesterfield, and I've been a priest nearly 13 years now. So it's wonderful to reflect with you on uh, the Spirit's gift specifically of peace. And what sometimes happens, at least uh, for me, is as you're thinking about giving a talk or offering a reflection or a homily, the more you're thinking about it, the more you start seeing uh, that gift pop up in the scriptures, uh, perhaps in the people you work with or who offer you some inspirational uh, encouragement or advice or even correction. And that's what's been happening with me over the last couple weeks as I uh, prepared to share with you uh, some thoughts, some prayer uh, on the Spirit's gift of peace. Uh, So this past weekend at Mass, uh, which would have been the fifth Sunday of uh, of Easter, which you'll be seeing this a little bit later than that, uh, but that's okay. Uh, The first reading was from the Acts of the Apostles, and it talks about uh, the church communities being at peace, uh, which is an odd thing because actually they were not at peace in the way that you and I think about it. Uh, They were being hunted down, they were being arrested, being thrown out of the synagogue and temple, disowned by their families, Um, and yet St. Luke knows that uh, they were at peace, not externally, Uh, but in their hearts and their souls because of the gift of the Spirit, uh, the gift of Jesus Christ. And that's something for us to think about now because I I can't tell you how many people over the past year uh, have talked about the anxiety, the fear, the lack of peace that they're feeling in their lives, uh, in their homes, even in their parish families. Uh, So we 
now more than ever uh, need to be given uh, that gift of the Holy Spirit, the gift of peace. So let's maybe talk a little bit about how the Spirit's gift of peace is different than the peace that the world tries to offer you and me. Um, And maybe it's good for us to think about what the peace of the Holy Spirit is not. Uh, So first of all, the peace of the Holy Spirit, which you and I so badly want, uh, it is not an absence of conflict. Uh, And this is really one of the beauties of spiritual peace, uh, is the fact that it can uh, exist in the midst of chaos, in the midst of loss and suffering and sadness, even in the presence of death. The Spirit's gift of peace can be with us because it does not rely on everything working just the way we want it to be. Secondly, the peace of the Spirit is not something that you and I accomplish. It's always God's work. The more we try to get it, uh, the less we will have it. And that's really true with all of the spiritual gifts that you'll be reflecting on in these holy days. Uh, Just like Adam and Eve in the garden, when they tried to grab something that belonged to God, that was God's gift to give them, the tree of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, uh, bad things happen. And so it's good to want peace. God wants us to desire it, but we should never try to take it for ourselves or accomplish it ourselves. It always has to be received as a gift from God. Uh, and he will always shower that gift freely upon us uh, through the Holy Spirit. Also, the peace of of God cannot exist in the midst of lies, anger, hatred, or anything else that leads us away from God. It will always be found with its spiritual friends, its companions of truth and humility. Sometimes I see this, uh, and perhaps we've all done this in little ways, Uh, we want to have peace, let's just say, in our families. And there's some truth that needs to be discussed, or maybe a loving challenge that has to be given to a friend or a family member. I think nowadays, oftentimes, parents really struggle with this, of challenging their children in difficult truths. And there's this temptation to think, I just won't talk about the truth right now. Right now, I'm going to try to have peace in this relationship, uh, but that peace won't last if it's not based in the truth of the gospel and and of Jesus Christ. So we want to be thinking about these things as we ask the Lord for his gift of peace. You know, are we trying to accomplish it ourselves? Are we trying to uh, create a utopia with no conflict? And are we separating the peace we desire from the truth of the gospel? If so, uh, the peace we would find or experience will not last very long, uh, and it's going to crumble pretty quickly. And lastly, uh, the peace of the world is easy to lose, hard to gain, and it's dependent on so many factors outside of ourselves. It would be what we might think of as an external peace. Now let's get to the good stuff, what the Holy Spirit gives us, his gift. Um, It's just that. It's a gift. We have to accept it on his terms and in the way he offers it. We can't say... uh, God, thank you for this great gift, but I'm going to modify it. I'm going to change it the way I want it. I'm going to try to have it on my terms. If we do it that way, uh, we're not going to be able to enjoy it and to experience in the way that God intended peace to be upon us. Secondly, it's God's accomplishment. It's not ours. And that's what makes it so wonderful and liberating. The peace of God is the result of the fact that he has already overcome the world and the worst that it can do to us. It is the fruit of his advocate that he sends us in this time before he returns once and for all uh, to be victor over heaven and earth. Just think about that for a minute, especially with the year that we've all had. If death cannot defeat God's love and his power, what can? And even if the worst sin and hardness of heart cannot overcome God's love for you and me, then what can? And once we really believe that truth and accept it in our lives and in our personal relationship with Christ, there really is nothing that should trouble us and nothing that should uh, make us lose hope because uh, the love of God uh, cannot be defeated, cannot be overcome. And that's really what the peace of God comes from, that knowledge, that truth, and our acceptance of it. And so the Holy Spirit's peace is internal. It can never be taken away by things, by persons, 
or the difficulties that each of us has to face throughout our lives. There's only one way to lose the Spirit's gift of peace, and that is us. Uh, it, it's through sin, through our rejection of God's love and the grace he wants to give us. So uh, that's the beauty of it. We have, if we love control, which all of us fallen humans do, well, guess what? We have control. We cannot lose peace unless uh, we give in to sin and reject God. So what are some ways that you and I can experience and increase God's peace within us in our daily lives? First thing I would just recommend uh, would be gratitude. Thank God for his blessings in your life, for the people and the blessings he has given to you. Uh, the more we give thanks to God, the more we see him, the more we experience in him in our life uh, all around us. We can also ask for an increase of faith to let God lead us more and more and to guide our decision making. We can ask him to open our eyes to see his presence in our life. Also pay attention to the evil one who tries to trick us into thinking that our peace will be accomplished by our own actions or our own cleverness, by our doing, our having, and our trying to control. As you continue through the final days of this Easter season, what you'll notice is that peace is one of the central themes, one of the main gifts that Jesus offers to his followers as he reveals and celebrates his resurrection. He wants you and me to be happy. He wants you and me to be well. And he wants you and me to be at peace because it's in that state, it's in that celebration uh, that the Holy Spirit grows and brings about his gifts in our lives and in the church. And so to wrap this up, I pray that you already have this gift of peace in your life. And as you experience it, as you receive it from our God, make sure you share it. Uh, that's how all God's gifts work. Uh, they, they grow in us the more we share them, and the more we share them and the more they grow in us, the more uh, God pours them out in our own lives. It's this wonderful cycle of multiplication and joy and happiness. Um, so let's thank God together uh, for the gifts he has put into our lives, especially this Holy Spirit's gift of peace. Let's share it with the world around us and then be open to the ways uh, that God will continue to let it uh, multiply in our lives and throughout the world. God bless you. Let us pray. O Lord Jesus Christ, who before ascending into heaven, did promise to send the Holy Spirit to finish your work in the souls of your apostles and disciples, deign to grant the same Holy Spirit to me, that he may perfect in my soul the work of your grace and your love, Grant me the spirit of wisdom that I may despise the perishable things of this world and aspire only after the things that are eternal. The spirit of understanding to enlighten my mind with the light of your divine truth. The spirit of counsel that I may ever choose the surest way of pleasing God and gaining heaven. The spirit of fortitude that I may bear my cross with you and that I may overcome with courage all the obstacles that oppose my salvation the spirit of knowledge that I may know God and know myself and grow perfect in the science of the saints, the spirit of piety that I may find the service of God sweet and amiable. Grant the spirit of wonder and awe that I may be filled with a loving reverence towards God and may dread in any way to displease him. Mark me, dear Lord, with the sign of your true disciples and animate me in all things with your spirit. Amen. So we pray for the fruit of the Spirit peace. O abyss of divine peace, confirm me in an unter in unalterable serenity of soul and peace of conscience so that I may remain firm in temptation and steadfast in virtue amidst the sorrows, sufferings, and contradictions with which this life is filled. 
And so together we pray, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Let us pray. Praise be to God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Help me to accept more fully the continual tender and loving awareness of your presence through the Spirit. May the unconditional love poured forth in our hearts bring freedom in the face of opposition and persecution. May it raise our own desire to become the fullness of the image and likeness of God for which we are created. May this charity lead more fully to self-surrender to God and to the compassionate love of others. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God. Make me a channel of your peace. If there is hatred, let me bring your love. If there is injury, your pardon, Lord. And where the start you fail. This spirit in life, let me bring home. Where there is darkness, only light. And where the sadness ever draws. Oh, Pastor Grant, that I may never see. So much to be consoled as to. So to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love with all my soul. Make me a channel of your peace. It is in part. to return.